Hello and welcome to chapter number 20 of the tutorial how to set up an online shop with Dreamweaver and PHP. Well, as I promised you in chapter 19, uh, I filled in the database with five products. All of them have their photo, but by now we can only see them this way because we haven't ranked it properly, but it will be the next thing to do. But before anything else, what we will learn to do is creating a backup copy of the database because many of you are downloading the zip from the blog blog.ayzweb.com and maybe it doesn't work properly or it has some kind of problem because you haven't named the field the same way remember you have to name the field the same way or else it won't work so if we come to Navicat we come to our database in shoes and we have these three tables there is a very easy way to create a backup copy of this database we just select the items right click and select dump SQL file. If we do this, uh, let's do one thing, we will save it in the folder of our shop. It's a view in his own folder, mine is shoes. And it will save it with the name which is the first one in the table. But we will change it to to database backup. I will add a number 20 no, sorry, uh, number 19, because we're backing up the files of chapter 19. So we save and automatically it makes the whole process. We close and let's check what it has generated. If we go to Dreamweaver from this point, you see we have an access to the SQL. I have it so that it opens here probably when you double click it, it will say it doesn't know how to open it. You ask it to open with Dreamweaver or as it, or as it pleases. Inside, basically, uh, we have a comment. Here we'll create the tables, create table category, table product, and table user. And once the three tables have been created, it would give me the records, okay? Inside table category, within the value one, boots, basically, it will complete the whole table for us. What's the use of this? In case we're moving the database to another computer, we could just regenerate it. It's very easy. Let's see how. In Navigat, imagine we're going to do a new table, a new database, sorry. Uh, sorry, a new database. I'm going to call it Shoes Recovery, for example. It must be around here. It is. To execute those queries, the database will generate here. We simply tell it execute batch file. We will go to the SQL we have just regenerated and just click start. 17 queries executed successfully. I update here with F5 and you see here I will have my copy. With this we will have the database copied as such. If, if you have a look at here, we choose recovering category, we we'll have the same data in product as well, and so on. There are no further secrets. How would this be with PHP my admin? Uh, because it's typical that when you are uploading something to a server you need, um, I come here. I haven't explained this to you because this is a hard way to understand, sort to say, the Navicat we had before. So, so we go to shoes. It's very easy to do here as well. How would we export from here for those of you who don't have Navicat? We simply click on export. You have selected the three databases. Sorry, the, the three tables. Um, and I always like to generate a download file. I click continue. Well, here you have some options like complete insert, structure, etc. We won't go into that by now, though. I click continue and you see, it automatically will generate the file choose SQL that would be a copy of the database as such. To import it, we have several options. I like importing from here. To locate the text file, we browse and we would go where we have our backup copy which would be this one database backup 19 SQL we would open it and clicking on continue it would execute all the queries and it would generate all the tables inside the database we've generated well uh, 
I didn't want to go more in depth with this. I will leave the file in the root. <coughs> I mean, I will leave it here next to all this. It will be called database backup 19 in case you want to import it, etc. As I'm going to make a zip for you, the backup copy of the database will be there. And as you now know how to work with it, there is no problem. Fine, back to the page. Um, what we will do now is displaying this data in a more beautiful and, and tidier way. I like doing this as uh, seen in shop pages. By showing a product list with the photo next to each item, it's seen uh, as a table. We won't do it with tables, this would be a step, a step back, you know. We will do it with layers, which I think will look greater and you will see it is, it's easier to handle. <coughs> So, first step to do it would be opening this page called index. Sorry, sorry, watch category. It's here that it shows us the product list. If you remember, here we had a do while that repeated the number of products in the database. Okay. Do while. Here we have it. And select me everything from the table products where the category is the one I selected. I remind you when I go to boot. It takes me to the page watch category PHP and I send via parameter the category I'm playing with. In this case, one. When I go to tracking, it's category four, which is category three, etc. I just added products to category boots, although some of the items are in boots, but well, I added some pictures I found around the internet. They are square pictures, 200 per 200 pixels. I like using square pictures because when you are scaling it, it looks nicer. But anyway, you can use the size you prefer. Next thing we will do is Let's do one thing. Um, to display the products and arrange them in something resembling a table, but with layers instead, I will create a master layer and a layer for each of the products. How can I do this? Bear in mind, we are mm, already in a, in a layer, in a div, in a fundamental div that would be the content, okay? Uh, the content matches all this part on the right side. Remember, we had a header up here, a sidebar here on the left, a footer down here, and here the content, which is the part we're going to work with. To do so, um, let's create a first layer that will stretch over all the products we want to display. We will do it by hand, div class equal result products, for example. I close. <coughs> And I will close this layer. I will close right after the if, okay? After check if there are products or not. I close it automatically and the next layer will be instead of this P for paragraph, we've got here, we will put another div here. Div class equals, and we will call it product, which is a pretty clear, we change this P for a div, and we save. Let's see what's happened here. We come here and apparently nothing has happened because because we have assigned them a series of classes to which we haven't given any characteristics, okay? Next thing will be going to the CSS. If you can remember the CSS, I remind you it's here. It's called main CSS and it's inside the folder style. So we go to folder style main CSS and we will make two new classes. What are the names of the classes? They are called product result and product. I copy here, put one here, and the other here. Product. By now, by now we make them without anything inside. We save, go to the web, and as you see, nothing has happened yet. Let's do one thing. Let's fill these layers with rounds with color backgrounds to check how they are working in the page. So we go to product result, background, and we select the color here, for example, this one. Accept, we go to product. You see I can select right here as you please. I click background color, I choose a different one and accept. I save and you see how it looks like. By now I can only see one of the two colors I chose. Let's do something else. Let's suppose here we want to make a square. Let's put three squares per row. I mean three items per row. And let's see how we can arrange this. To do this, first thing we need to know is what's the width we have in the main layer. Um, I remind you the main layer was 
we have it here it's content right in save content we will put another layer that will alternate the products and another layer that hosts the products graphics let's have a look here if we can find the width of the content because you can remember content content here it is 800 pixels right so let's create a layer and in addition it has 10 pixels padding upper and lower and zero padding side padding when it appears twice here this considers upper and lower and this one the sides it's just a way of shortening it though it may not be too clear okay let's do one thing in product result we will set a width of for example uh, 800 pixels so that it matches content so we type 800 there it is and to the product we will give 800 divided in 3 it will be 250 270 approximately so we will type um, with better with better use the calculator I think because I did it by heart and I'm not sure I did it right so it's 800 divided in 3 266 it wasn't that mistake you see let's take 260 to obtain a square so 260 will be the width of each of these squares right so in block sorry square we enter 260 and accept let's save and check what's happened so far there it is we can see the background layer which would be the one related to product results and here we have each of the labels created for each of the shown products the problem now is that these products appear here totally piled up and we need them to be put one next to the other so can we do this how if we hit the product layer and apply a left lining up as we will do now the product for example we will take it and make it float on the left side I accept save and you see how nice it looks now now it appears automatically lined up to the left side the background layer isn't really shown in fact I'm using it to contain these other layers but in fact if we wanted it to have a similar background we would have to use the, the overflow instruction initially we won't use it because by now we don't need it the result we wanted to achieve it is one next thing to do is in product look this has no margins everything is cluttered and looks horrible then um, taking into account that I have 260 pixels for each of the layers and that I will apply a small margin I will do one thing I will give it a padding and a margin of 10 what does it mean that my layer will grow 20 pixels per each side plus 20 in the upper and 20 in the lower so I will have to subtract 40 here although it sounds like a mathematical operation if you don't manage to do it it's a matter of trying and checking numbers and understanding do you see how the thing goes? Even so, we made a mistake and chose a table of two columns. Maybe because there is not enough room here, but fine. Basically, for you to see how it looks like, for us to see how does the other background works, what I told you about the overflow, let's do one thing. Overflow auto. This will stretch the layer until it overflows it all. There we have, you see? There is no room here for the third column, just for a little and why is it? it's because um, continuing with the position stuff um, we wanted to have three columns here one for each line but we gave too much space for each item so uh, let's leave it in 220 pixels we update and now you you can see it, it remains as we wanted you can always F12 in Internet Explorer to check the distances between elements you see here it says product result is 100 inside each class of product for example I would see the width I gave it and how how would it work with or without it I can add the right side the left side it's a very useful application to see how does this work so basically we have achieved our target let's remove this horrible purple background and you see I can add comments here with no problems I update and here I get the results fine next thing will be displaying the image for this to look nice sort to say so how can we display the image in category watch you remember here 
we're just taking the image's name. You see, shoe one JPG, and then the rest is pasted here, Wellington, surprise, etc. How can we add an image here? Remember, the images were stored in a folder which is uh, documents products. You see, here I have my images, so I will just pretend I add an image here, and I will take advantage of part of the code. I click here and I say insert image. It is in documents products, and I choose this one, for example. No more, and I say I want this image to have a size of 120 per 120, for example for it to become smaller so here we have the image the IMG basically it displays the, the image in the screen so to say what I really want is that instead of shoe one I get the value I extracted from the database if you realize that value is right here so I cut control X and here I paste the rough and straight way I save and you can see here I get this why is this lightning appear here? Because it's a query to the database, it's a variable, it hasn't got yet, but it's developing. Let's see how does this work. We save and we update. And you can see this begins to look more like a shop, doesn't it? Next thing will be arranging a little all this to look a little better. We will add a cuter frame, but I will leave it like this for you to experiment and make a cute layer to display the product. And well, I'm sorry this chapter has been so interrupted, but in chapter 21, we will continue going more in depth with this topic, right? Regards.